In this video, we're going to take a look at splitting and merging multi-channel files and stereo files. Okay, so first thing I want to point out is that this has actually been possible for quite some time. I can't remember the exact release or the exact version of Studio One that we got this feature, but we're taking a look right now in Studio One version 6.2.1. I've got a tone generator plugin sitting on a stereo bus channel. I have an audio track which is listening to that stereo bus channel. And if I was to activate this, let's just kill our main out so we don't have to listen to that. And I recorded this. Let's just record one or two bars of this tone just so we have an audio file to work with. And let's delete this, we'll trim this back. Now, if we take a look at this and we right click, we have the option to select and pool. So this has created a 48K 24 bit stereo file. Now, if we select this file, in other DAWs, you have the ability to basically right click the clip, region, audio event, or whatever you want to call it, or the track header, or in the pool, and you have some ability to split stereo files and split multi-channel files. So in Studio One, we can still do this, but it's kind of hidden. So what we have to do is select the Files tab, and now if we navigate to the actual song folder structure, notice that we have the media folder where this file was created, 440 Tone Print. If we now right click this, we have the option to split into mono files. Now, the thing I want to point out here is that those mono files don't immediately go into your pool or anything like that. If you wanted those mono files to show up in your pool, the only way to do that is to actually click, hold and drag them into the arrange window and then they will show up or they will populate in your pool. But the other thing to point out is that if I was to show in Finder, that these do actually go in the media folder that was created for this song. But like I said, it's not in the pool until you actually drag and drop it into the pool. And then if we head over to pool, you'll see that we have the left branch of this file over here. Okay, and then last but not least, the last thing that we can do is we can select both of these and we can actually merge these back into a stereo file. Now this file over here, you guessed it, we right click, show in Finder, this has now created a brand new stereo file that's basically just merged those. And you can do those with different files as long as the channel naming makes sense. Studio One will automatically merge together things that are marked as like left and right. It should get it right as long as the naming structure is the same with the proper channel branch in the actual name of the audio file, then this should work. So now let's hop over to Studio One 6.5. Okay, in 6.5, we have very similar functionality, but this works in a multi-channel format. So this can be really useful. What I've done here is I've set up a bus channel again and an audio track. Now in this case, in 6.5, in order to control the actual channel format, or I should say the channel width of an audio track, we do this by clicking from within the arrange window as long as your track header height is high enough. Notice that we have the ability to choose the channel format. So I'm going to, we could go with stereo, but in this case, I'm going to go with a 7.1.4 track. So that is for audio tracks in terms of how we change the channel format is we actually have to do this in the arrange window. Now for effects channels and bus channels, if we select in the console and we look at the very bottom here, notice we have speaker setup. This is where we change the actual output format of our effects channels and bus channels from within Studio One. And also I do want to make mention of the fact that if I open up the Dolby Atmos renderer for the sake of this tutorial or this demonstration, I have the enable additional headphone output option on and let's just go with a straight stereo. We're not listening to a binaural rendering of an immersive mix. It doesn't really matter in this case, but this is how I'm actually recording any audio for this video. Uh, but if I go to my IO setup and we go to our outputs, I would just set up anything right over here. So I could set up something. It doesn't even need to be mapped to anything because I'm actually monitoring binaural through headphones, or in this case, I'm just listening to the stereo mix. So now let's do the same thing we did. We're gonna to go to our bus channel. We'll make sure that bus one is the input source. We will mute and record arm this. We'll open up our tone generator. Let's click power, same level. This is showing up here now. Notice though that this is only stereo because we haven't changed this yet. So let's change this now to 7.1.4. Now this plugin automatically readapts. Let's also kill our headphones for a moment. So this plugin is automatically readapted to be the multi channel format. Now, if I wanted to take a look at any one of these, like I could bypass some of these different streams over here and notice that as I'm bypassing them from the tone generator plugin, Notice that the actual channel, in terms of the outputs, this is super hard to see because it's so skinny, 
that these will actually drop off. And I can bring them in just by clicking this over here. Let's start bringing some of these back. What I'm going to do is I'm going to render some tone, which is for sake of demonstration. Let's do the exact same thing we did before. I'm going to just record a couple bars of this just so we have some audio information to play with. We'll push stop. We'll deactivate the tone generator. And now if I crank up the data zoom, we should be able to see this. Yeah. Now this is all just even in terms of the tone that we generated. So like I said, not really important. Just want to have this gives us a good indication of the amount of channels that we have on this 7.1.4, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. And if ever you're interested in getting the actual channel layout, you open up a mix tool. This will give it to you right here. This is the format that Studio One is using right over here. Now, from here, same thing again, right click, we can select and pool. Notice that we have now instead of stereo, it says 7.1.4. But like I said, no options to split into mono, to split this multi-channel format up into mono files. But if we go to the files tab and we now navigate to the proper media folder of the proper song folder, the enclosing song folder, I now can right click this file, which is the file that we just created and I can split to mono files. Now in this case, now if I right click and I show in the finder, we now have the main file that we created, which is right over here, but we also have these individual streams, each one of these. And notice that we have appended the actual branch in terms of the multi-channel file. This is the center, this is the left, underscore L, underscore LFE, underscore LRS, left rear surround, underscore LS, left surround, underscore LTF, left top front, and so on and so forth. Now. Here's something that's kind of cool about this workflow when you're dealing with multi-channel files versus stereo. In 6.2.1, the only option we really have to do is to reconnect two mono files into a stereo file. Or that's really the only option that would make sense because we only had a maximum channel width of stereo that we could work in from within the actual console. But in Studio One version 6.5, we could drag any one of these. Let's say I wanted to, for some reason, let's say I wanted to extract the LFE channel of a multi-channel file. I could just click hold and drag and drop the LFE channel in. And then maybe this would be something that I wanted to add some saturation or harmonic distortion on this. That's something that we could do. Another thing that we can do, quite obviously, we could select all of these and we could right click and we could merge these back to a mono channel or a multi-channel audio file. And then it would just create a brand new or a duplicate 7.1.4 using again, the channel names to help determine where certain things go. Um, but another thing that we could do is let's say that I wanted to make very specific channel widths from this main file. Maybe I wanted to make an LCR, or maybe I wanted to make something like a quad file. So if you don't really understand these terms, it's okay. We're going to get into this a lot more, but let's say I wanted to choose the left and I wanted to choose the right and I wanted to choose the center. If I right click and I choose the option to merge to a multi-channel file, take a look at what we have now here, 440 tone multi-channel in brackets two, but take a look at here. Now we have a 3.0 cinema format. So this is an actual three channel file. And if we go ahead and right click and show in Finder, and we take a look at everything over here, we can see if we really wanted to, we could open this up in the inspector. And here we can see audio channels three, right? Because this is a three channel file. What about if I wanted to create a four channel file? There's a couple different formats of four channel files, but let's choose a left, let's choose a right, and let's choose a, where is it? A left surround and a right surround or a left rear surround and a right rear surround. Now we right click again and we merge to a multi-channel file. Now take a look at what this created. We'll click this over here. This one is a 4.0 music file. So this is a quad file. So we can actually split a multi-channel file up into different ways. We can extract individual streams or individual stems from those files. And then we can create new files directly from within here. But as I mentioned, the only way that you will actually see the file show up in your pool versus just being in the media folder is if you drag and drop it into the arrange window of your project. So I haven't even opened this, but I can tell you that the LFE channel or the LFE file, this is here. Because I drag this in, the LFE file is now part of my pool. 
But if we go back over here, remember that every single one of these, we will show in Finder, every single one of these was actually put in the media folder itself. So that is splitting and merging multi-channel files. Lots of different things that we can do with this workflow. It can be used for working with poly files from field recorders, a lot of different things. But just wanted to do this video. It is kind of possible in previous versions of Studio One, but if you need to separate any files or merge files or anything to do with that type of workflow, that is how you do it. Anyways, hope you enjoyed it. Catch you in the next one. Cheers.